Welcome to this prophetic word that the Lord spoke to me today. And actually, it was a reminder of already some time ago when the Lord spoke to me in one of our prayer times. And today, the Lord spoke to me through uh, the story when Jesus calms the storm, which you find in Mark 4, verse 35 uh, to 40. And that it says, that day when the evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. And he, they took him along just as he was in the boat. And there were also other boats with him. A furious squeal or storm came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped, nearly uh, drowning. And Jesus was in the stern, in the back of the boat, sleeping on a cushion. And the disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you even care when we drown? And he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. And then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and asked each other, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? And the, when I read this today, the Lord reminded me that he spoke to me some time ago. Uh, when we were speaking in August, I shared a message, a prophetic message about Gen, uh, uh, Exodus chapter 7 till 12. But the next prayer time, the Lord spoke to me also about Genesis 14. And... The Lord told me, I want you to share because this is important because this is a now word. This is happening now and this is going to happen in this coming season. Uh, because this is a same lesson that the disciples learned as what the Lord also taught the Israelites. Now, Moses had been for 40 years in the desert learning through his failures till he finally changed his identity. There's another message maybe in the teaching I can give on that, but this is a prophetic message. And when the, Lord, when the people under the leadership of Moses leave Egypt, the Lord leads them by a cloud uh, which gives shade during the day and a pillar of uh, fire by night. He leads them out of Egypt and he does not lead them in the land of the Palestine, not along the coast. It was a short and easy way because he knew they would run back. And I believe this is the picture today of the church in many places. And with the church, I don't just mean a generalized picture of the body of Christ. It, it, it looks like that as well, but I want to speak to you today personally. How does your life look like? How does my life look like? What is the culture that I am in when I'm among my people who serve the Lord? And now the, the thing is that when the people left Egypt, the Lord led them to a place uh, which is described here. And most of the maps you see in the back of people's Bibles, if you have those maps in it and you see the journey out of Egypt, it always passes by the mountain in, in Egypt called Mount Sinai. It is not Mount Sinai of the Bible. The Bible says Mount Sinai is in Arabia. Read your Bible. Then you already know it's not in Egypt. They had left Egypt when they reached Mount Sinai. Uh, I would just encourage you, Google this, the, the, the documentary in search of the real Mount Sinai. You will find it in YouTube. It's an amazing document, documentary where they show all the video proof of where the real Mount Sinai is, included Elim, Mara, and everything else. Now, there's an amazing place where they've crossed the Red Sea. But when they reach Mount, the mountain of Mo, when they are actually before that place, when they cross, before they cross, the Lord puts them in a place in the V shape of the Red Sea, even without Pharaoh pursuing them, they were stuck. The Lord led them in a place 
where by the natural eye, there was no passage. Now, by doing the survey underwater, it turns out that there is an underwater ridge. The Lord thousands and thousands of years before prepared already the passage for the Israelites. But he leads them to that place where in the natural, you cannot see a way out. And I, I'm quite sure there are many people who feel like that today. And I say, why am I in this place? Why am I here? Now, there are many reasons why we can be in a bad place. But for some of you, it's the Lord led you there. Because you ha might have left Egypt, but Egypt has not left you. It took Moses 40 years to get free from Egypt. To let Egypt go. And that was at the burning bush. And so when the people, the Israelites come to this point, the pillar stands still and doesn't move. It's like, yeah, we can't move, but the pillar isn't moving. What's happening? What's going on? And then the Lord hardens Pharaoh's heart and Pharaoh is pursuing behind him. And they get terrified, just like the disciples in the boat in the storm. They get terrified. And already Pharaoh, with the clouds of dust he is creating, he is terrorizing them. And the Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen and troops pursued the Israelites and overtook them. Uh, as they camped near the sea, Pihari Road, opposite Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and they were, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. And they were terrified and cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us here in the desert to die? Oh, you know, when we get stuck, when we get in a corner where we don't like, how easy is it to accuse other people when we lead ourselves to that place? Or sometimes the Lord leads you there because he wants you to recognize what is really going on in your heart and to see if you really trust him and put you to the test and show you his glory. Because already before that, the Lord said, I will show the Israelites my glory through the, 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 the army of Pharaoh. And so... They didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. <laughs> they were they had just barely left, left Egypt and forgotten the terror of Egypt. There are suddenly meat pots there. <laughs> uh, it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the deserts. Oh, how little is the faith we have in the Lord. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm. And you will see the deliverance of the Lord. The, that the Lord will bring you today. And this is the word the Lord gives you today. See the deliverance of the Lord that he will bring you today. See what is the Lord about to do. He is not ignorant about what is going on. He, will, he is the one that hardens Pharaoh's heart to make a fool out of Pharaoh. Whatever Pharaoh might be in your situation, and I know in this world at this moment, there are some Pharaohs around running with their horses. Who has ears to hear will hear. And the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? You see, it was, he, even Moses was a little bit shaken, but he stood firm to, to the Israelites to tell them, don't worry. But inside, he was crying, Lord, please. <laughs> he knew the Lord, but he was still like, Lord, what are you, what are you telling? What are you doing? And, and I know a lot of people that trust the Lord, they may be shaken today. Like, Lord, I trust you, but please help me. <laughs> And tell the Israelites to move on. 
Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord and I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of the Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud was moved from the front and stood be behind them, coming in between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud broke, brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near to the other all night long. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued them and, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. And during the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud <laughs> I love it. Uh, at the Egyptian army and threw them into confusion. Lord, people, we are never to be thrown into confusion by the enemy. The Lord will throw the enemy in confusion. Those who do not serve the Lord, those who do, those who do not honor the word of the Lord, those who do not live by the word of the Lord. And he jammed the wheels of their chariot so they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, Let's get away from the Israelites. And the Lord, the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. And so it happened. And if you see that documentary, you will see that when they go into dive underwater next to that reef in the Red Sea in that place, you see the, the remnants of the chariots even up till today. The, 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 the animals, the, the, the corals and the things that have grown around it have like solidified it forever as a proof and a testimony. The Lord is mighty. If you are hemmed in on every side, do, do not fear if you serve the Lord. Do not fear. But look up to the Lord. He is your Redeemer. Look up to him and move in the direction the Lord tells you to go. And he will fight the battle for you. He will fight the battle. But you obey the Lord in humility and sincerity. And leave Egypt behind you. Don't, don't carry the ways of Egypt with you. If you leave Egypt, Egypt cannot remain in your heart. You have to let go of the ways of Egypt. God's ways are higher than the ways of the world. Light and darkness have nothing in common. Get yourself rid of the ways of Egypt because Egypt is about to be drowned. And the Lord will lead you through the impossible place in a place with the natural eye you cannot see, but the Lord will lead you through to victory. And yes, after that, there is the desert. There is a time of testing. There is a time of learning. There is a time of redemption coming. And that is not just an easy journey. It is just another journey with the Lord where you will learn more to trust him. But it will no longer be a journey in Egypt. It will be your journey on the promised land. But you have to leave Egypt behind. Otherwise, Egypt might extend your time in the desert as it is with the Israelites. And it is not what the Lord wants to do for you. If you want to reach the promised land, you have to let go of Egypt in Jesus' name. Amen.